We continue our series looking at players and one thing we got to see out of them heading to the new season and should Danny Green's jersey be retired? You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome back to Lockdown Spurs. I am your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio, and I'm glad to have you back. Subscribe to wherever you find podcasts. And seriously, you go to YouTube, subscribe to us there. iTunes, there too. Ken's 5 Plus app, yep, we're there too. Pick a platform, subscribe to Lockdown Spurs, your number one spot for all things San Antonio Spurs. What are we talking about today? We're going to continue our series about one thing we got to see from insert player's name. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at the big man, Mamu, Mr. Sandro. What is one thing we got to see out of him? So far, through a few preseason games, he's showing us that maybe, maybe there's a lot more to him than just meets the eye. Nerd reference there. Sorry, guys. I had to do it. But nevertheless, we're going to be looking at one thing Sandro has to do in the new season. Our guest is going to do that as well. Also, we're going to ask the question, should Danny Green's jersey be retired? He recently announced his uh, retirement. And uh, if you look at the rafters, there's some players that maybe should not be up there. Well, you know, that's a whole other episode. But we're going to be looking at whether or not Danny Green's jersey should be up there as well. Then get into your comments, the Lockdown Spurs fans. You guys are – I know the regular season is right around the corner because you guys are leaving a lot of comments. So they're starting to spike up, and there's too many to uh, tackle. We're going to pick two. That's coming up later on this episode. So, yeah, Sandro, yeah, we're going to be talking about him today. Yeah, by the way, I, I have a hard time pronouncing his last name, so I'm going to try to avoid it as much as I can. I might just say Mamu. But, uh, yeah, Sandro, you know, re-signed, you know, young guy. He's a big. Could he be that missing, you know, floor spacer at the big position the Spurs desperately need? He might be. Popovich has a lot of uh, good things to say about him already in the preseason. Uh, he closed out last season pretty strong. Could he be a missing piece to the Spurs' dilemma about adding big men that can floor space, you know, knock down those mid-range shots, knock down those three shots? We're going to look at some of the numbers. We're looking at uh, the three-point shot and also maybe some intangibles that he brings to the court. With our guest, is going to bring him on. He is Matt Guzman. Where is Matt? There is Matt. Welcome back, Matt. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. No problem, man. By the way, everybody, check him out on X at Matt G Z M A N. He is with uh, Sports Illustrated slash Spurs. He writes for them, and uh, he'll be talking a lot about what he is cooking uh, for you guys, uh, Spurs fans, uh, now that the regular season is almost upon us. But Matt, you know, before we get into our talk about Big Mamu here, man, what do you what do you liking out of the Spurs from the preseason so far? Yeah, I think that you know. And we've been told it many times, you know, it's one of those things. You don't really look at the results in the preseason. You just kind of look at yeah. individual players and lineups and rotations and how, how are they improving from last season? How are they improving even just over the course of the few games? Um, so far, I've really liked what I've seen from Julian Champagny. I mean, especially knowing that Vassell yeah. is going to be out. You know, he's one of those players that could slide into that starting rotation. So seeing him do well has been uh, a big plus. But at the same time, I think that, you know, you're starting to see some of these younger players look a little bit older on the court. And obviously you add Chris Paul and you add Victor Wembanyama, and they had a, a, a night to remember in their first Spurs debut oh, yeah. preseason. Um, and so it's been cool to see, you know, all of these new faces and, and, you know, everything that's been preached about, you know, this is a young team, they're getting better, you know, they're having one more year under their belts. It looks to be sure. that way. Um, and I think that's been pretty apparent so far. Yeah, yeah I'm going to tell you. That night, everybody in the arena, when Chris Paul made his Spurs debut, had their cell phones out or watching <laughs> for that first lob pass. I'm not kidding. Everybody was just on their right. seat waiting for it. Uh, media row, too. Guys were hammering their cell phones out, trying to capture the moment. It, it was it was, it was was good vibes in the, uh, in the frost that night. And by the way, shout out to the Spurs fans. They're not sellouts, but my God, they are definitely packing the frost for a preseason matchup. So that's good signs that some exciting games are ahead once the regular season begins. For me, uh, I've been liking what I'm seeing out of Minix. <laughs> Seriously, he he could be a guy that the Spurs are going to be like, yeah, we don't want to waive him. What can we do to either put him in Austin right. or stash him away somehow? So I like what he is. But kind of a good segue because Minix is a big that can knock down threes. Sure. So is Mamu, uh, big Mamu. Let's go ahead and talk about him. So, for those of y'all who don't know, we've been doing a series where we look at a player on the roster. We look at one thing. That's the game. You got to pick one thing 
that he needs to do moving forward, especially next season, to help the Spurs get W's, not get L's. So, Matt, you are the guest. You know how this works. Uh, what do you like out of Mama? What is one thing you got to see from him once the regular season begins? Sure. You know, and dating back to the end of last season when he started getting a few more minutes, it was pretty clear that he has, you know, he's obviously he's big, he's physical, he can get to the rim and score. Um, the thing we didn't quite see from him was that three point shooting. And so far in the preseason, that's kind of changed uh, quite, uh, quite a lot, actually. Um, he's played just two games, but he's hit three three pointers at least. Um, in both of those contests, and he's looked strong and confident while doing it. And I think that that's one of the biggest things that I've liked from him so far is just, you know, he's kind of taking that next step in his game and adding a component to it, you know, because he's had the size, he has the ability to get to the rim, but does he have the ability to space the floor? That was one of the big questions, and he seems to be answering it so far. Obviously, it's just preseason. It's, you know, a different story if it will translate to, you know, regular yeah. season minutes and if he will be able to carve out a place in the rotation. But I think it's a good early it's an early good sign that he's going to be able to do that. Um, and so I do like what I've seen. And I think if I'm going to have to pick one thing that he has to do to kind of continue this round or this run, it, it would be just to keep making his threes to prove that he yeah. is able to space the floor because that gives him, you know, an extra, a, an extra component yeah. of it that he brings to the team rather than just yeah. being a man. And, and also too, the Spurs desperately need just shooting. I, I don't care what position Absolutely. at this point, just somebody who just needs to knock down the shots. And if it's Mamu, so be it. But We'll, we'll give some numbers to back up uh, Matt's point here. There's been a good trend in Mamu's uh, early career that he could be a very potent or at least a reliable outside a shot uh, maker, especially from the three line. You look at what he did uh, with Milwaukee uh, before coming to San Antonio. He was connecting about 30% of his threes. All right. So then he comes to San Antonio that same season, 22-23. Uh, 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 then he goes up to 40, 34% when in the San Antonio uniform. So, all right, so we like that. Okay, fine. Maybe just in a small sample size, he only played 19 games uh, with the Spurs that season. Now, last season, plays 36 games for the Spurs and then connects on 38%. So he goes from 30 to 34 to 38. By the way, last season at 38%, he was ranked among other bigs at his position in the 75th percentile. So pretty, pretty high up there. Yeah, I agree with you. If he can stretch that floor, that would be amazing. And before I get into what I think he should do, uh, Matt, what are your thoughts about, you know, what we see from him and Wimby? There seems to be some chemistry there between the two guys. Yeah, absolutely. And that goes back to the fact that they'll play soccer during warm-ups with the basketball. Yeah. Um, you know, I've seen them do that quite a few times. I think there is some early chemistry there. I think um, at the same time, you know, that's something that Victor has been working on all season is just kind of being easy to play with and, and having his teammates, you know, they obviously had to learn to play with him last year. And I think that's getting a little bit easier, Sandro included, um, you know, and as a big man, you know, it's, it's a little different because him and Victor are, are technically the same position, yet they play so differently. Um, and so for them right. to be able to complement each other would be huge. And so I do think we're seeing a little bit of that early chemistry, you know, if because Victor likes to drive in, he likes to kick out. So if he can kick out to a big man like Sandro, mm -hmm. who can then drive in, hit the shot, or just continue swinging the rock, I think that there's going to be um, something to look at there as far as putting them on the court together. Yeah. He got a, a big thumbs up to close the season from Wimby. Now, when Wimby, your franchise guy, gives you a thumbs up, that that's a good sign that you might have some job security in San Antonio. Yeah, the the pairing was just awesome to see. You know, they really understood each other. Um, it's almost like they were communicating without communicating. They just knew where to be, and that's a good thing for the Spurs uh, this season. So, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that was a high top my list. If I had to pick one thing, was shooting. Now, again, before we transition, though. We will stick with the shooting topic here, Matt, you brought up. So he's a pretty good three-point shot uh, maker. But when it comes to something within the three line, yeesh, that's uh, less, less to be desired. Um, we know the rim, he's going to finish, so we're not even going to go there. You know, he, Last right. season, 66% of the rim, so yay. But you start looking at just where he shoots on the mid-range, 36%. From the mid range, he shot. He took twenty two shots mid range last season, made eight. Small sample size, fine. But then you look at uh, other areas, the long mid range, mid range game where the NBA defines as just outside of fourteen feet, but inside the three point arc, fifty percent shooting, uh, thirty five percent from the short mid range. NBA defines that as just outside of four feet, but again within fourteen feet of the, th of the free throw line. So seems to be a little erratic from the mid-range game there. So it's either with Mamu, Matt, 
it's either he's either in the paint near the rim or outside the three line. You got to have something in the middle. Hey, I want to talk to you about FanDuel. You want to go to FanDuel.com right now. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So much when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play by play, so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You just got to go to FanDuel.com right now. Speaking of FanDuel.com, look, the NBA season is also around the corner. Spurs fans, time to have some fun with your silver and black on the court. The app is very easy to get, very easy to use, user-friendly, very intuitive. Make your picks, one, two, three. Bet on parlays, bet on win spreads, totals. I mean, seriously, you can have so much fun with sports this sports season with FanDuel. Again, America's number one sports book. You will get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Another reason why you got to go to FanDuel when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Go to FanDuel.com right now, America's number one sports book. This is Emilio Rivera, a padrino for the Mayans MC. You are listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Right, absolutely. You know, and that's <clears throat> that's a facet to every player's game that they should be able to pull out if they need to. Um, you know, rarely do we see any players kind of make that their default shot. Um, you yeah. know, we haven't seen that in quite a long time. But, <clears throat> you know, like we said, it's encouraging that he can hit shots from beyond the arc, or at least he has mm -hmm. the potential to do so. It's good that he's making his shots around the rim. But, you know, I think... If he's going to continue to to carve out a place in the rotation, he's going to be able to be he's going to have to be multifaceted. Meaning, you know, if if teams figure out that they can either force him to drive in and cut him off right there at the rim to make him pull up, and he's going to miss, or if they realize that they can just guard him on the perimeter and not let him get easy mm -hmm. three point shots, you know, he becomes a non factor. And so I think yeah. in a way he does he is going to have to improve. You know, his shooting when he's yeah. not quite at the rim, but he's almost there just to kind of make him even more reliable um, and even more of a threat because no longer can defenses just kind of focus on one part of the of the floor and force mm -hmm. him to do something you know that's definitely something that i would like to see from him um and so you know maybe that's something that is being stressed in training camp you know maybe you yeah. start taking more of those shots just to get more comfortable with it and figure out where you're at yeah uh, there is a good trend you know not not to just completely bash his uh shooting within the three line you know uh, again he split last year uh, with milwaukee and san antonio right. but when he came to san antonio uh, he was about 52% shooting uh, from the two-point field goal range. Last season, he was up to 56%. So there is an upward trend in the right direction. Just needs to be more consistent. You know, do you kind of, you know, give him a little bit of a pass because, you know, when his first year here, didn't play full season with the team, was unfamiliar with the system, fine. Last season, and he gets a little bit more burn, but last season was another developmental season. So you keep that in mind as well. But, you know, the, the trends are definitely going in the right direction from the two-point uh, field goal percentage, as you mentioned, the three-point shooting, uh, somewhat of the mid-range game, but that still needs some work. So we like where Mamu is going. Y you know, Popovich talked about him so far in a couple games already in the preseason. He glowed about him, said, yeah, you know, he's, he's making the shots. Uh, Pop said, yeah, he's making us really think, like, wow, this guy could really be – a factor this upcoming season do you think he's going to get major major minutes off the rotation or you know he think it might be fluctuating for him i think it's going to be fluctuating um okay you know early on we're seeing quite a lot of minutes from him um in the preseason and that's you know, that's what you like to see because not only is it a chance for him to kind of get a feel for the game and shake the rust off before the regular season begins but it shows that they're giving him that chance because they want to see how many minutes they're going to be able to give him when the regular season comes around. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think that he's done nearly enough to make him a, you know, 25, 30 minute uh, rotational player just yet. Um, but I do think that he's going to have his games, especially early in the season, if he continues to play this way, where he will get a lot of minutes. And then if he continues to do well, he'll keep those minutes up and then he'll, it'll kind of rise and fall as his play goes. Um, but I, I do think that, you know, he's a player that has a good chance to carve out a rotational spot for himself um, and could end up being a good impact player for the Spurs. We are talking with Matt Guzman. Make sure to follow him on X at Matt GZMA. And you see it on your screen. Do that right now. He's with the Sports Illustrated Spurs. Uh, he is a writer for them. Apparently, he has a crew now. That's what he tells me. He has a crew. <laughs> I, I do. I do have a small staff of writers. Yeah, they've been great <laughs> so far. It makes things a lot easier. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, we were at media day, and some Matt told me, I was like, oh, you got a crew. Okay, well, pardon me. Pardon <laughs> me, Matt. All right, we're looking at Mamu. What is one thing he needs to do? So I think the obvious, Matt nailed it. It was just the, the outside shooting, you know, three shot. Got to keep that down. For me, though, I'm going to focus on something that he's doing good already, and I just want him to keep on doing that. And that is just being a workhorse out there, just setting those picks, playing tough, getting in in, in the paint and uh, mixing it up. And I bring that up is because already in the first two, at least the first two preseason games, Popovich brought up one word, physicality. In game one versus Thunder, Pop brought that up. Said we weren't physical against the Thunder. We weren't physical against the Thunder. Matt, last season, how many times did we hear that word? We weren't physical enough. We we let them push us around. Right. Game two, like sure, it was somebody like every game a pop brought that up. Game two preseason, Orlando, what did Pop say? We focus on physicality. Now you don't have to worry about physicality with Mamu. He's gonna mix it up. He's a big guy. He's not going to get pushed around. And sometimes, Matt, I think the Spurs team needs that type of mentality, a little bit more dog in them. Mamu has that. He's willing to get in there, play tough, you know, not back down. I like what I see out of Mamu in that department. I got to see him continue doing that, bring that physicality to the Spurs. Because Pop's own words, and Matt's been in that media room with me, Pop stresses <laughs> physicality. Right. And we hear it over and over again. But you never hear that about Mamu. Or, or they do, it's Pop will call him the patented phrase, a tough nut. That's Pop's, <laughs> fav- Pop's favorite word phrase to say. So, yeah, I like the toughness that he, uh, Mamu brings a uh, Matt. Absolutely. Yeah. And and something that we've been hearing in preseason is that, you know, like with Stefan Castle specifically, to take a, a slight detour here, you know, he yeah. came in saying, I'm going to be physical. I'm going to show, you know, that I'm here to work. I'm going to put in the effort and I'm going to play defense. And that's how I want to win the respect of my teammates. And, you know, that just seems to be kind of the general feeling in the locker room is that, you know, players that put in the effort, players that play defense, that are willing to do what it takes um, to not only carve out a role for themselves, but just to, to help the team get better, to help the team win. Those mm-hmm. are the players that are going to earn themselves minutes, that are going to earn themselves favor with Popovich. And so, you know, to hear him say, that, you know, like you said, the tough nut, you know, he's going out there and he's putting in the necessary work and yeah. he's showing that, you know, I understand that I've got some things to prove. So I'm going to do that. You know, I'm going to put in the effort. Yeah. I'm going to set the screens. I'm going to space the floor whenever I can. He's not just, you know, trying to get the ball and shoot from three and then call it a day. You know, he knows that he's got a lot to do. And and I like that we've been seeing that from him early on is that he's not mm-hmm. scared to do those kind of things. He's not yeah. above having to set the screens and having to prove himself. And so, you know, I think it's going to be good. I think he's earned the respect of his teammates for sure. And as, as he continues to play in the preseason, if it's anything like the first two games, he'll only continue to rise. Yeah, w- one point I forgot to bring up, and uh, it was to your point about the shooting, is I believe it was after the Orlando game, uh, preseason match, that is, Popovich complimented Mamu by saying he looks a lot more confident taking the yeah. shots. Right. Yeah, so th- that's good to see. So. If we're going to throw in a bonus, one thing we need to see, you know, confidence rise out of Mamu. And we're starting to see that, at least from the three shot, which, again, is definitely needed because the Spurs lack uh, outside shooting bigs. Wimby's one, yes, but when he's out, you know, who are you going to turn to? Collins? Right. I don't know. Mamu, (laughs) so far, so good, you know. Sure. Uh, You know, Bassey, you're probably not going to get in that Bassey from uh, deep uh, range. But overall, Mamu's definitely on the upward trend. He's still a young guy, you know. I, I didn't realize he's he's still a kid, man. What is he like? Twenty five, I think. He's like he's still young, you, you know. Barely what 25. three seasons in the league? Yeah, three seasons in the league. Um, that's it. So his NBA career hasn't even begun to start. I mean, that's that's the thing. You know, it, it, we're not even there yet. Where he will max out at, don't know what his ceiling is. But if you look at all the tea leaves, you could the Spurs could definitely have a scoring big that is tough physical and can get things done in the paint as the numbers showed, get things out, get things done in the three line as Matt showed and be, like I said, be that tough nut and the Spurs could keep him around. Uh, Of course, it's an open question if he's for the long term a spur, but at least for the rebuilder now, he's definitely what the Spurs need. Those are our thoughts about uh, Mamu and what one thing he needs to do. You can let Matt know uh, your thoughts on his thoughts at Matt G-Z-M-A-N. And let me know by simply going to the Lockdown Spurs YouTube page, subscribing, getting good subscribers. That's how I know the regular season is right around the corner when the subscription numbers go up. So. 
going on? I'm Josh De La Cruz from Blues, Clues, and You, and you're listening to Lockdown Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Keep on doing that, Spurs fans, Lockdown Spurs fans. Uh, we love to see it. I know we're going to get to you guys next, Lockdown Spurs fan comment. That's coming up right now. But as you heard in the intro, uh, and you all know already by now, Danny Green, former Spur, champion with the Spur, uh, announced his retirement recently. And there's been chatter among Spurs fans on whether or not Danny Green's jersey should hang up in the Frostbank Center. Now, Matt, you know this. The, the bar is <laughs> kind of low, kind of low. There's some players up there that I don't think, no disrespect, but should not be up there. I don't think Avery Johnson should be up there. I don't I don't think Bruce Bowen should be up there. Uh, you know, I think it should, I mean, for retired jerseys, you got to be the man. You know, Timmy, yes. David, yes. Iceman, yes. Manu, yes. Tony, yes. And I think maybe it should stop there if I, it was up to me. But sure. Whew, what do you think? Danny Green, longtime Spur, made his way up through the uh, you know the ranks in Austin Spurs, back again and back to San Antonio, gets released, comes back, was a beast in the 20 uh, 2013 NBA Finals versus Miami. Uh you, you think Danny's there or nah, you know, his number whatever once he picks. I think he wore 3 and 14 in San Antonio. Right. Uh, goes up there. Yeah, I mean, I think there's two different ways of looking at it, right? Like, will he versus should he? And I think if we're talking about yeah. should he, um, I would say no. I think that he's, you know, I, I, nobody would argue with yeah. you to say that he's an icon, that he's one of the, he's a fan favorite spur for sure. I remember he was mm -hmm. one of my favorites growing up. I would turn on the news and Danny Green was hitting nine threes or eight threes and it was just crazy, um, you know. But I, I think when you look at it at the end of the day, you know, the last person that was that their jersey was retired was, was Parker and I was there we were there for that game yeah. and you know they made a whole big ceremony and mm -hmm. it's grand it's, it's awesome you know but Tony Parker won four championships with the Spurs he was a pivotal part of their entire dynasty and you know Danny yeah. Green was a big time player he was an impact player a good mm -hmm. rotational player but I mean he he was there at the tail end he won that 2014 cha championship with them and you know yeah. he definitely had a big part in that but I don't think he was ever you know, a, a huge, huge part of the dynasty as a whole. He was just one of the fan favorite players that did his thing and did it well. And so I think he's a great player. All props to him. I loved that he was a Spur and I love that he won with the Spurs. I'm just not so sure that he, uh, he stacks up to somebody like Tony Parker or Tim <laughs> Duncan or Manu Ginobili even, you know. And so that's kind of where I stand on that. Yeah, yeah. I, I have uh, a kind of a cool story with Danny Green. I, I told it uh, a couple of days ago in Lock Those Spurs. I'll re repeat it here for you, Matt. So, when I was living in New York uh, City, I think I was there for nearly 20 years of my life, uh, Danny Green had a couple of camps in Long Island. Now, for those who don't know, Danny's actually from the New York area. He's from Long Island. And he had a couple of basketball camps. And that's sure, I'll go out there. Um, and Danny was like, yeah, come on out, you know, cover it for us. So I went out there. Well, I come to find out he had two camps going on the same day. Mm -hmm. He had one in this area of Long Island and he had one on the other side. So. Uh, he was going to go to the to the second camp, and I said, okay. He's like, well, I'm on my way. I was like, cool. So I was looking for a cab, and he saw that, and Danny looks at me. He goes, do you need a ride? I was like, yeah, I can use one, yeah. He goes, I'll give you a ride there. So we go to his truck, and he goes, he goes, uh, he goes, let me show you this. So middle of the day, mind you, sun's coming out and everything. So he turned, he pressed some buttons on his, uh, his key, the key ring there. And the um, the windows, the mirrors on the driver's side and the passenger side just shot a beam out. And it was like a hologram of the Spurs logo when they started rotating on the on the driveway. So then uh, I was like, oh, that's cool, Danny. And he goes, yeah, yeah, get inside. So we go inside. It looked like something out of the future. You know, he had it all souped up and all this nice tech and everything. Turns on his music. We drive. So on the way over there, all I come thinking is, I'm going to freaking car with Danny Green right now. <laughs> I'm thinking, like I'm driving with Danny Green. So we get to the next stop. Uh, he goes, all right. He goes, uh, cool. He goes, we're going to go inside. And so that was kind of like my Danny Green uh, moment there. So it was, it was a real fun memory. But no, crazy. I'm with you. Look, uh, look, I love you, Danny. But, you know, she's, you know, it's it's just that the bar, the bar said low for the Spurs. You know, they, sure. they, they will put a number up there for sentimental reasons best example is james silas um 
look at the books, you know, he was a good player, but not Tony Parker, not Monte Ginobili. Uh, so there's that. But man, I would not be shocked if the Spurs do it. But at the same time, I don't think they will. I think that because I don't want and maybe who can be next? I mean, obviously Popovich. I don't know if Pop will even allow him to have his name up there. I can <laughs> definitely see him saying no. Don't even think about it. Every player but, that has ever played under him might override his decision. I feel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it could be Wemby. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, you know, some Spurs fans are okay with Kawhi going to. I said some. I said some. Everybody. I didn't say all. Some Spurs fans are okay with Kawhi's number going up there. Uh, I don't think that'll ever happen, but it might be Wimby could be the next one if he stays for the long, long haul and wins titles in San Antonio. All right, we need to hear what you think, guys. You think Danny Green's number should go up at the Frost? Uh, let Matt know on X at Matt G Z M A N, and let me know on Lockdown Spurs YouTube page. All right, let's go ahead and dive into some fan comments left on the Lockdown Spurs YouTube page. By the way, everybody, go there right now and subscribe. Uh, we got a lot of comments, Matt. I'm trying to sift through them. They're just so many. Oof. All right. Which one to pick? Any, mini, miny, mo. All right. Here's one. This is from Blake Eats 1988. He's reacting to the Wimby and CP3 pairing. He says, Matt, finally, Wimby is going to eat CP3 with them dimes. Uh, do you think that CP3 Wimby uh, partnership? is exactly what he needed Wimby and what the Spurs needed or do you, and also do you think the Wimby CP3 connection is just going to be devastating for the league absolutely you know and yeah. and Chris Paul is one of those players where at this point in his career he's hopped around quite a few times just to kind of find a place where yeah. he can really impact where he can you know go on to win a championship ideally that wasn't really the expectation coming to San Antonio but at the same time you know, you never know. You never know what can happen. And I'm not saying that they're going to go and win a championship this season, but that pairing is is really, really good for Victor Wembanyama because he's getting to play yeah. with an elite level point guard that he's yet to play with. You know, throughout any at any point in his career, even with mm -hmm. Metropolitan's 92, even on the French national team, you know, this is the best point guard he's ever been played or yeah. paired with. Um, and so for him, you know, that kind of gives him the top notch as far as how do I position yeah. myself for a guard? How can I best impact? the floor as a big man when I have somebody who's capable of passing, who can get me the ball, who knows where my spots are. And I think for Chris Paul, you know, he's getting a chance to show, you know, this is what I can do as a point guard. You know, you guys may have counted me out. It's been 20 years, but look, you know, I've got this guy named Victor over here and I'm going to show you exactly what he can do and what I can do when I have somebody like him. I think it's a great pairing all around. I think it's going to be very exciting to watch all season. Um, and I think that it was, you know, just the one game that they've had together so far was, was encouraging. You know, yeah. you don't know what, what Chris Paul's future is going to look like, but at least this season he's going to get a chance to kind of, they're, they're going to get a chance to mutually benefit each other as well as get better and develop. It was interesting to hear Chris Paul openly say that, yeah, you, you know what, you would think it's easy to connect with the Wimby on law passes. And he said, it's actually not. He said, it's a lot more intricate than people think it is. Right. Um, so that was refreshing to hear because, you know, what do we hear last year? Spurs fans, oh, just lob it to the guy. What's wrong with you? He's seven, five, <laughs> seven, four. How hard can that be? Right. Well, the point God pretty much said it's a lot more easier than done. So or it's a lot harder. You basically, you get what I'm trying to say. Basically, it's a lot more intricate. Right. So, but no, but seriously, the, the CP3 Wimby connection uh, for however long it lasts, half a season, a full season or beyond, you know, I think it's going to be great, not just for Wimby, for for the entire uh, players that stick around. Look at Pop Absolutely. said after the Orlando game, he said he's he's something he's, he's amazed at what, what CP3 even brings up in huddles because I even I think about that, you know, he said he has a way to connect with these young guys, these right. players. So that's going to just last forever for these young guys and think about it imagine if you're like a rookie like harrison ingram or even a even kelton johnson you're like i've got chris paul on my roster like that's yep. my teammate so that's gonna and resonate with that's this, exactly uh, what team. they've been preaching all training camp it's just you know how cool it's been to play with him and, and how impactful him and harrison have yeah. both been right off the bat you know and so it's yeah. I, I imagine it's only going to increase as the season goes on yeah exactly we'll stick with the cp3 theme here we have a, another comment from, uh, okay, I'm sorry, I, I can't pronounce this one. I'm going to try my best. Dung Gwyn, uh, I'm sorry, I8660. 
He says, brace yourself, Matt. CP, Chris Paul, will have a ring. And he puts black hearts, so, you know, in Spurs colors. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about that there. Uh, e- <laughs> uh, I don't think any ring could be coming the Spurs way, not for a few years from now. And maybe Chris Paul may be retired by then. But I like the confidence, though. I- I'll take that. <laughs> e- 660. Sure. Yeah, what about you, Matt? What do you think? Yeah, I'm not so sure about Chris Paul winning a ring with the San Antonio Spurs. Not just not that he's not capable. I just I don't think that's happening this season, and I don't know how long he's going to stay afterward. Um, yeah. I think if you put Victor's name in there with the Spurs heart, you know, I think that that's a lot more realistic. I think that that's pretty. Mm-hmm. You know, if he develops the way he's supposed to, that is a that is almost an expectation is that they will you know make that deep mm-hmm. push into the playoffs. But you know, I think he's going to benefit from having Chris Paul this year and maybe next year or even just half the season, however long. But I don't know if uh, we can pencil in a Chris Paul uh, championship mm-hmm. ring in San Antonio. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Chris Chris even joked about it uh, after the Orlando preseason game said, I've been wearing a lot of uniforms of late. So uh, so he's been bouncing around, and in order to win a title, you got to kind of stick, and either that's sticking with uh, the likes of a Dallas or a Denver or a Boston, you know, and so far that hasn't happened. So we'll see. You know, I'm not going to – Matt, I'm not going to be surprised if come waiver time, you know, the Spurs midseason say, yeah – Go like I'm making this up. Go latch on with Boston or go to Dallas. You know, we, we get you because the Spurs have done that. They did it with LMA. They did that uh, with other other vets. Any other vets like Doug McDermott is a recent one. Hey, we're gonna let you go latch on to Indiana. You know, hopefully uh, you'll get a chance to have a deep playoff run. So not wouldn't be surprised if they do that. But I would love for him to stick around at least for a full season. I would not mind right. that. I would not mind that at all. And I want to see how the young Spurs react to when. Chris Paul's not having a good day when he's in a mood. Former teammates of uh, Chris Paul have said if he's not winning, he can get on teammates in in the wrong way. Not in the I don't love you way, but upping the leadership, being, you know, the the talking with them. I want to see how this young team reacts. Uh, I want to see if the Wimby CP3 connection gets stronger and stronger. And I think it will. And not just that. You know, what we were seeing uh, Stefan Castle learned from CP3. And speaking of Stefan Castle, I don't know if you saw this, Matt, but I spoke with him after the game uh, versus Orlando. And he already he told me that the game is already slowing down for him. I'm like, wait a minute, Castle. Wait a minute here. <laughs> we're in preseason right now, you know, but if you feel it's slowing down for you, go for it. I, no problem. But uh, confident much, uh, Matt, uh, for the young kid? You know, I am, I am confident for him um, and, and about him. I think that everything that we've heard about him so far has been exactly that, that he plays with his own pace, that he doesn't get sped up, that he, you know, he makes good decisions. Pop even said at Summer League he makes wonderful decisions. And I think he's, he's shown everything that he needs to early on. Um, and I, I think it might be a little early for him to be saying that, but the fact that he feels confident enough to say that means that he's approaching it the right way. You know, he knows what it's supposed to feel like and he's learning and he's taking things from everybody. He's a really great kid. And I really do think he's going to be a big time um, addition to this roster. Um, And so it's good to hear that he has confidence, at least, um, about the game slowing down. Hopefully that doesn't come back to burn him, you know, when the regular season starts. But either way, he's (laughs) he's uh, he's been he's been very impressive so far, both off the court and on it. You know, when, when he gave me that answer, I was sitting in the media room. And my Matt knows this. I like to sit in the back row near the cam- near the uh, TV cameras. He likes to hide. I'm glad I sat. Yeah, I like to hide. Yeah, I, I sit <laughs> in the back. Uh, but if I was sitting in the front, or people can really see me, you know, they would have seen my reaction. I literally looked at Castle like after he said the you know slowing down for me. I was like, okay, gonna roll with that. <laughs> you said it. You said it. It's in the op- it's in the media session, so it's fair game. Yep. But other than that, yeah, I like the confidence. But, hey, we're done talking. We want to hear from you. You can let Matt know uh, your thoughts on his thoughts on Mamu, Castle, Danny Green, your comments on the Lockdown Spurs YouTube page by following him on X at Matt G-Z-M-A-N. Do that right now. Matt, tell us what you got going on in your neck of the woods. 
Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think I teased it a couple of weeks back um, last or yesterday morning, actually, I had a good conversation with Dan Hurley about Stefan Castle. And so, you know, I'm, I'm working on piecing that piece together, just kind of the people that made Stefan who he is off the basketball court as he's kind of gearing up for his first NBA season. So I'm really excited about that. It's been great. I got to speak with him um, on my last day in San Antonio as well, um, one on one. And so <clears throat> it's been great. You know, I'm learning a lot about this kid. And I think he's really talented and I'm excited to tell his story and kind of let people in on, you know, who he is off the court and, and how he's perceived and just what he brings to a roster um, in the NBA. So look for that. I can't wait to read that myself. Again, you can check that out by going to Matt's X page right now. Matt G Z Z M A N. You say that right now. I see what he did with his uh, his name there. Matt Guzman. But see, <laughs> yeah. There. Well, fun fact, you know, whenever I was making this stuff, um, I tried to put my full name and it said it was taken. Yeah. So I was like, OK, so what can I do? And then I took the U out and I was like, yep, you're good. I was like, all right, cool. And then I rolled with it. And instead of, you know, maybe this platform, I can have my full. I just decided to keep it yeah. all the same. So <laughs> Maybe you should have offered that person uh, some money, kind of like what CP3 offered, allegedly. I don't know. Uh, money <laughs> to Kelden. It's, it's all good. We're all good. <laughs> nah, yeah, I ain't going to spend money on that. <laughs> that's, that's a little bit ridiculous. Thanks, Matt, once again, for getting <laughs> here this week on Locked On Spurs. And we thank you all for making Locked On Spurs your first spot, your only spot for all things silver and black. We'll be back tomorrow talking more silver and black. By the way, Matt, uh, a little, I guess, nerd personal history for you as well and for me this is the last week of the nerd wall i'm very very sad oh the no very, very sad. yeah and i think believe i think next week it's gonna be totally redesigned and everything okay so, shed well, a tear, tear, shed a tear. yeah for me i'm shedding a tear but i but i really i already got a sneak peek for what ken's is doing for me uh so it, it's like going from kindergarten to a PhD level for the stuff they're making for me. Oh wow! Yeah, they have. They're gonna have to come and like literally train me on some stuff. Uh, but uh, but as far as the nerd wall, yeah, this is one of the casualties of hey. upgrading locked on spurs. That's like knowing me, knowing me, Matt. I'm I'm gonna figure a way out to have something <laughs> reflecting. <laughs> you should. Yeah, I'll, fig- I'll figure something out. But we'll retire uh, the nerd wall jersey in the rafters at Frost. You know what? You know what? I think we're gonna have to have a ceremony on uh, Friday <laughs> you know, we'll have the for the nerd wall. But other than that, yeah, again, everybody, we appreciate y'all. Keep on coming to Locked On Spurs. Subscribe at uh, Ken's 5 Plus app, YouTube, iTunes, Spotify. You know where to go. Go subscribe to us right now. Check out all the Locked On NBA podcasts. The regular season is right around the corner, so get on board. Go subscribe to Locked On Celtics, Locked On Bulls, Locked On Rockets. And we pick up team. They are covered at the Locked On NBA Network. So for Matt Guzman, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Locked On Spurs.